We're on the verge of uh, an anniversary, 400 years ago exactly to this week, 59 devoted Christians displayed one of the greatest um, demonstrations of love and sacrifice of their lives, their fortunes, their sacred honors. They had to flee England because they couldn't preach the word any longer. They were being chased by a tyrannical king. They had to flee to Holland. They had some great pastors, but they believed that God had something immensely greater for them. And they wanted an environment in which they could display the love of God. And so they set out on a decommissioned ship that was ready to be mothballed. They set in the, in the fall, 66 days across the Atlantic under very terrible uh, conditions. They sailed way too much later than they should have. In fact, it was so rough, they were blown 800 miles north, thinking that they were going to go to Virginia. They ended up landing in Massachusetts. I wanna to talk today about the power of a covenant. The power of a covenant. You know, David says in Psalm 111 and in Psalm 105 that God remembers his covenant forever. That's definitive, <laughs> beloved, forever. You know, this wasn't the first time that the United States had tried to plant, or England had tried to plant a colony in America. 70 years before this, the island of Roanoke a tribe. In fact, those individuals are still lost today. We have no idea what happened to them. A few years later after that, Jamestown was attempted to be founded as a colonial village, but it was founded for all kinds of reasons. Usually, and many of them were to exploit the environment of minerals, the gold, the silver, then the tobacco. It wasn't designed in the way that God had wanted to grace this country. And exactly that, they had tremendous problems with the Indians for decades. But those pilgrims, when they landed in Plymouth, 59 of them who had cobbled together what we would equivalently believe as nickels and dimes for more than a year, not a frontiersman among them, not a handyman among them, but a bunch of believers wanting for a free expression of the Christian faith to flourish in the new colony. And before they stepped foot on that land, each with an impending awe of what God was about to do in their lives, they got together and they made a covenant. In fact, it was the precursor of our constitution and our declaration of independence. It was basically that we're going to combine our faith, our purpose, our love for one another and create a civil body politic. It was known as the Mayflower Compact, a covenant with God. Let me read to you one of the, the lines of the covenant. I encourage you to look this up and to read it. It's, uh, they, they printed it out so it's easy to understand from the Old English. But I'll just read you a few lines from this. Having undertaken this settlement for the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian faith and for the propagation of the gospel to plant the first colony in the northernmost parts of Virginia, do combine ourselves into a civil body politic for the preservation of the aforementioned. You see, these Christian forefathers of ours, they were seeking a place for the free expression of God's purpose. And regardless of whatever ills, and we hear a lot of it today about how terrible in many ways our culture is, our history, how tainted our history is. Well, beloved, here's the real history. Our nation was the first ever nation ever founded by these 59 Christians that wanted nothing more than see the advancement of the Christian faith and the propagation of the gospel. And I would dare say that God has not only remembered that covenant, but he has honored it with the greatest outpouring of missionaries around the world to preach the gospel. So despite our faults, despite any ills, despite some of the revisionist attempts at history, you've got a proud heritage of men and women, just like Pastor Amy is explaining this morning, that gave it their all and all because they loved him all. We think about this moment, we think about this great challenge. When you sit this week and at your Thanksgiving table, 
and think about this story and of its great sacrifice, there is nothing wrong to be challenged by their great love and sacrifice for the Lord Jesus. Because without it, you and I very well may not be in this place today being able to worship God as we know it. Think about that this week and let it change and affect your life. We're so thankful that so many of you continually give in such a sacrificial way as to fuel the fire of how this church impacts this city and this valley and this nation. Just like today, we are giving away free turkeys for those that can't afford to do so through the generosity of many of our uh, congregants and patrons displaying acts of charity. We've made it so easy for you to give and we thank you for those that use already these various ways. And for those that are using PushPay or would like to get into PushPay, all you have to do is simply text 77977. And right there in the memo, just put EN City Church. You'll be led to a series of prompts and they're easy follow directions to give. Uh, for those that use our secure website and you go on to that, there'll be a button to press to give and you'll walk through those steps. And again, for those that continually, every single week, send us in checks to this location, we thank you so much because without your combined effort, we couldn't get to do the things that we get to do and help the people that we get to help. And we're not stopping regardless of what goes on outside. God's commands to us have not changed from the very beginning of the age. 